Second Chronicles, chapter 18, verse 28. So the king of Israel, Ahab, and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, ran up to Ramoth Gilead. It's not what were, it's not, that is not what they were told by the prophet of God. Notice how Ahab's not even mentioned. King of Israel, not his name. When a man goes off into hell, he has no name. When a man will not do what God has told him to do, if he has not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as a Savior today, he doesn't have a name. Until your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and you are known of God. So, in verse 16, he told all the people of Israel, go to your house in peace. He sent off into jail, verses 25 to 27, and he says, listen, if you come back, then I've spoken a lot. In other words, you're going to die. Prophecy is, if you want to live, don't go. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself. Anybody knows me knows I'm going to have fun with this one. 1 Samuel 21, 13. And we're just going to look at what the Bible says. Black and white. And you have to because they won't read the Bible believing churches today will not believe what the scriptures say and they'll violate the scriptures. 1 Samuel 21, 13. David's in trouble. David's on the run. He's scared. He's not relying on God. And the Bible says in 1 Samuel 21, 13, and he changed his behavior. That's the first time that word shows up. Before them. And feigned. That's the first time that word shows up. Fain is to pretend. Fain is to disguise. Fain is to say, I'm somebody who I'm not. And feigned himself mad in their hands. So David is pretending to be mad. He's not mad. He's pretending to be mad. That's kind of interesting. As we'll look at 1 Samuel 28. David was not who he was. So our church will put on a little Christmas pageant. And we'll have little Mary holding little Jesus doll. I'm Mary. No, you're not. I'm one of the shepherds. No, you're not. You're a liar. And you're making your kids lie. Verse 8. 1 Samuel 28, 8. And Saul disguised, that's the first time that shows up, himself, and put on other raiment. You mean he has a costume. So we'll go to Sunday school dressed up like the patriarchs dressed up, not our regular clothes. And he went with and two men with him and they came to a woman by night costume disguised night and i pray thee to find me a familiar spirit witchcraft this is your halloween and he gets a treat at the end of this chapter he gets food and this is the story of saul coming to the witch of endor Knows how he disguises himself, so he will not be seen. The witch or the woman or the diviner had no idea this was Saul. He had a nice little costume on. So, it's wrong for Hollywood actors and actresses, the harlots of Hollywood, but it's not wrong for the church. That's a double standard. You know, Saul will be reproved by God for seeing this witch. He will tell David, as Saul, as I took my spirit away from for going to the witch. Oh yeah, by the way, he had a good costume. No. It's a sin. 
It's a sin. First Kings 14, 2. This is not just a fly-by-night thing. It's throughout the scriptures. First Kings 14, verse 2. We're just touching the tip of the iceberg. I don't know if I've done, but maybe I should do an in-depth study. 14.2, And Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise, I pray thee. And disguise. Here's the first time that shows up. The other one was disguised. Past that. This is disguise. All right, so we had the first place of disguise and disguise. First one was with Saul, dressing up. Disguise thyself. Why? That thou be not known to be the wife of Jeroboam. Dress yourself so you don't look like who you look like. That's deceiving. That's a liar. And watch what God said to uh, verse 5. And the Lord said to Ahijah, that's the prophet, God's man, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam comes to ask a thing of thee, of her son. For he is sick, thus and thus shall thou say unto her, For it shall be when she cometh in, that she shall feign herself to be another woman, actress. And it was so when Ajayah heard the sound of her feet, as she came at the door, that he said to her, Come thou, wife of Jeroboam, why feignest, that's the first time that word shows up, thou thyself to be another. Well, look at my boy up there playing Joseph. Sunday school teach, uh, teachers dressed up themselves like Moses and Aaron and Miriam for class. They made themselves somebody who they weren't. How cute. How much feigning yourself and how much of a sin it is. And yet you get up there and you say, oh, the, the harlots of Hollywood. And yet you got the harlots of the church. It's a sin. It's a sin. Uh, all right, Terrible, let me check this one. Either Nahum or Nahum. Okay, I think. I write Terrible. Can't be Nahum. So it has to be Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 6. Nehemiah chapter 6. Nehemiah chapter 6. I wrote this one down here. I didn't know to do that. Nehemiah 6 8. Then I said, and I'm saying, There are no such things done as thou sayest. You lied. You told a lie. You said something, but it's not true. But thou feignest them out of thy own heart. Saying the words that are not true words as a script. Look at that word feign and look what it's been so far what we study. It's a lie. Oh yeah, Baptists will say it's a Baptist story. No, it's a lie. Plain and simple. Then one more place, let's go to Luke 20. 20. Ooh, the gospel. Luke 20, 20. We're going to the Gospels. We're out of the Old Testament. People don't, people don't realize this church age, for what you do for the kiddies, you're going to be judged. And I hope I don't ever end up with a millstone around my neck just to... You could... What be you lie to that? You're going to lie to that kid and you're going to expect to have the gospel be, be prospered? You're going to teach an evil and call it good. I think there's something about that in the Bible. What want to them to call evil good and good evil? We're going to dress up. We're going to pretend. We're going to have a stage. We're going to have, and then we're going to expect the good out of it. That's nonsense. Now watch this, 2020. And they went, they watched him, Jesus. And sent forth spies. They're looking for Jesus. They're looking to catch him. 
which should feign themselves just men, that they may take hold of his word. There's men going around following Jesus in the crowd of Jesus, the multitude of Jesus, and they're pretending to be just, they're pretending to be followers of Jesus, and their main ambition is we want to catch Jesus, we want to catch him, do something wrong, so we can report it back. Everything to deal with the feign and disguise is comes down to one word and one word only to see. And you can do what you want to do, but that's the scripture. Back to 2 Chronicles 18, verse 29. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and will go to the battle. But put thou on thy road. He's not having no faith in his 400 prophets, is he? The prophet that he hates that speaks the truth. He has a little doubt here. Look at verse 14. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto Micaiah, Shall we go up the river Gilead to battle, or shall we prepare? And he said, Go ye up and prosper. They shall be delivered to thy hand. He's lying. Sarcasm. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? And that's exactly what Micaiah had done. So after this report, Micaiah has walked off going to jail. Always to Maria. Ahab turns to Jehoshaphat and says, We're going to battle. I want Jehoshaphat to the prophet I just asked said no. But then King Ahab, king of Israel, said, all right, you put your robe on. You put your kingly garb on, and I'm going to dress up as somebody who I'm not. Everything we've studied. So they will recognize you before they recognize me, and that's what's going to happen. Jehoshaphat, you're going to stick out like a sore thumb. Watch what happens. Verse 30. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots that were with him, saying, Fight ye not with small or great, save only with the king of Israel. Okay, the, the Syrian order, the Syrian command, the troops get the word. This is the battle plan. You see Ahab, king of Israel, you kill him. That's it. You got a guy on horseback carrying a sword, leave him alone. You got a man that's holding a bow and arrow, don't worry about him. You come across King Jehoshaphat, no. The only person I want in this battle, your orders are, is I want the king of Israel dead. That's it. I want one death on this battlefield. Look at that charge. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, they said, It is the king of Israel. Now remember, the king of Israel is dressed like a peasant. He was told to put his robes on, so now they recognize that's the king we're looking for. Syria never expected Joseph Jehoshaphat to be there. If there's at one king running around, it should be one king, and that should be the king of Israel. It's like a chess game. There is no two kings on the white side or two kings on the black side. There's one king. And we're going after that king. The problem is the king is dressed up as a pawn or a bishop. Or a rook. And when they do come across a man that is dressed in royal apparel, that's him. There he is. You know what nations are forgetting today? And I, I'm not. I'm going to say plural, but I, I don't know the, the strategy of war to China and Japan. But here is a battle, and the kings go right up to the battlefield with the warriors. This would eliminate a lot of nonsense wars. If we're going to say as a nation, any nation, 
All right, we're going to send our troops into battle. It would be changed if that king, president, whatever he, that, that head of that nation's called. Prime minister, whatever. All right, prime minister, yes, we're going to go to war. Okay, let's go. You're going out there first. King, you go out there. President, you go out there. That would change things around. And remember, he's wearing his robe. So out of the whole entire battlefield, here's this one guy sticking up. That's the king. And when you look at the history of wars in the world, the most stupidest war ever for a battle was to wear red coats. We knew who you were. Kabang. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat, they said, how did they see it was him? He's dressed as a king. It is the king of Israel. Therefore, they compassed him, they compassed about him to play. They encircled him. They are surrounding Jehoshaphat, and he's in the middle. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him. And God moved them to depart from him. Wait a minute. God says, hey, guys, open up your eyes. Open up. Let me open up your spiritual eyes. Let me open up your physical eyes. Let me look. That's not the man you're looking for. Though, you know, the mercy of God is he should have killed Jehoshaphat there. Jehoshaphat did not belong on that battlefield. After he told the king of Israel, let me find one prophet of the Lord to preach. And the prophet of the Lord preached, and he said, don't go. And Jehoshaphat disobeyed just as much as the king of Israel. And we can step out in places where we don't belong. And God's mercy and grace say, you know, I'm going to show you a little mercy and grace. I'm not going to kill you. You should have been dead. You got to come to the point is you're in the wrong spot. Jehoshaphat's in the wrong spot. I bet you just scared him. It scared me. I was in the wrong spot living in the world, saved and backslidden. And the Lord turned upon me almost drowning. My hand didn't reach out and grab that pump too. I, I would have been dead. And right then and there, the Lord says, you better pick up. You don't belong here with these people. That was an eye-opener for me. If I would have died then, I would have had very, very little fruit if I got any today. For it came to pass that when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, God showed them. Look at verse 31. God showed them. That's not the one you want. They turned back again from a pursuing him. So here's this encirclement around Jehoshaphat. That, oh, God lightens their eyes. Right? However, God didn't. They're like, okay, turn around. Let's go. Wrong guy. And there's Jehoshaphat left. They're like, thank you, Lord. I got to get out of here. <laughs> I hope that was a response. But watch here. Verse 33, and you got to really read 33. The army has encamped around Jehoshaphat, not the king of Israel, Ahab. Ahab is still out there in the battlefield somewhere. The captains were just with Jehoshaphat, not Ahab. And a certain man, and that's interesting because when the Bible means certain man, there was a certain man. But he's not named, he's not known, but there was a man in the military. He drew a bow at a venture. That means by chance. The guy picked up his bow and shot it. Didn't really aim. And smoked the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. It didn't ricochet off the breastplate. It didn't ricochet off the, the thigh pads, whatever they call them, where the breastplate connects to his harness so he can wear his battle armor. Right between that battle armor is where that, that arrow went. That arrow was directed and guided, not by a guided missile, but by a guided God. And that arrow went 
in between the armor and hit Ahab. Between the joints of the heart. That's not the joints of the body. That's Here's two blank places of his armor. And God said, put that arrow right there between those blanks. Therefore he said unto his chariot man. So he's in the chariot. The chariot's moving. God directed that arrow. Churn thy hand. That thou mayest carry me out of the host. For I am wounded. I've been shot. Turn. And the battle increased that day. It got more and more and more and more. Howbeit the king of Israel stayed himself up in his chariot. He's holding himself up. He's watching the battle as he's bleeding. As he's dying. He's looking out. Against the Syrians. Until the even. That's 6 p.m. About the time of the sun going down, he died. Now, that's tragic because if we look back at 1816, the prophet of the Lord said, then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. Where was this guy? He's driving around in his chariot. Hey, we need the king of Israel to help us. Do you see him dress? I don't see anybody that looks like him. That dress of a king was supposed to tell his troops that that's the leader. They couldn't find their leader. He looked like them. And the Lord said, These had no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. Everyone is listening to me. Go home. Verse 25. Same chapter. Then the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and carry him back to Ammon, the governor of the city. And Joe asked the king's son, And say, Thus save the king. Put this fellow in prison, And feed him with bread of affliction, With water of affliction, Until I return in peace. I'm coming back, guys. You keep him in jail till I come home. And Micaiah said, If thou certainly return in peace, then has the Lord, then hath not the Lord spoken by me. And at the very last part of verse 34, the sun going down, he died. Micaiah told him two times, Don't go, you're going to die. It's hard. And we got to realize when we're going out there telling people, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. The gospel, preach the gospel. We got to realize some people, they're not going to listen. We tell them once, we tell them twice. They got family telling them, they got friends telling them, they got, they got all kinds of people telling them what they must do before they die. There are going to be people out there like King Ahab. Remember, his name's not mentioned. Lazarus went into the Abraham's bosom. Lazarus, Abraham. What was the name of that rich man? I have no idea. A man that goes off into hell has no name. Your name's in the Lamb's Book of Life. The Bible says we get we will get a new name. Glory to God. Not only am I known by God, but he knows my name. A lost man, God doesn't know you. 